Over the last couple of years, we've heard many stories about the huge need for workers in manufacturing. Today, we get even greater insight into the issue thanks to a couple of companies with facilities in Plymouth. Here's Corey Bork with today's Business Matters. Are, are you guys both students? No. You almost look like you're related. At Productivity Inc.'s recent Student and Career Day in Plymouth, Students from across the Midwest learn what manufacturing is all about. Have you guys heard of Protolabs before? And learn what companies like Protolabs are looking for. So our challenge sometimes is finding individuals that just really kind of have basic employability. Kevin Neinheis with Protolabs says his company is looking for people wanting to start a career in manufacturing. He says the industry has changed a lot and isn't what it once was. It's not what they think of when they think of, you know, dirty, dark, um, greasy manufacturing environments that they might have thought, you know, from my generation or their parents. Here, manufacturing students not only see the very latest technology, but they also learn they're very much in demand. I always get phone calls from employers, uh, well basically our customers, calling and asking, do you know of any schools that have any students that are ready for hire? Hope Riska with Productivity says her company is working to help students understand what's out there. Everything's manufactured from your cell phones to your house to your clothing, everything. Then it's like a light bulb goes off and they're like, oh, okay, I get it. Productivity is the largest machine tool dealer in the Midwest employing 150 people at its Plymouth location. It hosts this career day every other year to help address a major skilled labor shortage. According to a study by Deloitte, over the next 10 years, there'll be more than 3.4 million new manufacturing jobs in the U.S., but only 1.4 million workers expected to fill them. That's a shortfall of 2 million workers. It does a good demonstration of showing how we can get at all five sides and produce a very intricate part. Alan Wessels gave CCX News a tour of the latest technology, including machines that cost upwards of a million dollars. He says machines are more expensive and more intricate today because of the short supply of labor. Five years ago even, as recently as that, this was more of a cutting edge uh, machine that would be very few shops would invest at this high level. Today, this is uh, more the norm. Students we spoke with say there's a constant stream of employers lining up to talk with them. It feels really good, honestly. Like, just at Dunwoody, they got guys coming in every week, pushing, they're looking for us, they want us. It's nice being able, when I'm done with school, to know that I can work, go almost anywhere, and anyone's hiring right now. So there's limitless opportunities for me. And employers like Productivity hope other students will consider manufacturing. The more that we can share with them and show them that it's a great career path, no matter where you go, there's always a job open and you can go so many different places, it's immeasurable. For Business Matters, Corey Bork, CCX News. Solar energy is becoming more common in Minnesota. As Eric Nelson found out, it's even being used by a local religious institution. Thank you for being here on a brisk cold fall day to witness what is a major milestone to our organization. On a cool and soggy Sunday in Maple Grove, it was all about muddy footprints and carbon footprints. It was a very exciting moment for us. It's a momentous occasion because we've been speaking about this since 2009. The Hindu Temple of Minnesota has embraced solar power. Following the Hindu ethos of ahimsa, meaning do no harm. Their core belief is that being eco-friendly is the right thing to do. The carbon footprint that they remove, that is a big, big, big uh, contribution we make to the community and to the world in general. Sangrahana. Sangrahana. The Hindus want to set a positive example for younger generations. We need to make sure that we leave the world the way we came in, or even better, if possible. I strongly believe temples should educate and be a center for community service. According to Hindu leaders, Earth-friendly actions are exactly what today's youth wants to see. The future for them, live in a world of uh, less pollution, be less dependent on fossil fuels. We're very curious to see, once this gets going, uh, what are the savings? Maple Grove Community Development Director Joe Hogaboom believes going solar is something that will become more common. We're looking at actually integrating this kind of technology into our city buildings, uh, both on rooftops as well as uh, ground-mounted systems like this. And so we've been really following this very carefully. The upside of this solar array conversion is that no carbon dioxide 
or harmful emissions are produced. We may not save a whole lot of money, but you look at the bigger picture. I'm Eric Nelson, CCX News. A Maple Grove couple wants to bring people together through gaming. Marcus Erickson is trying to raise at least $50,000 to open an eSport arena in Minneapolis. The business would be called Gamebox Cafe. It would feature state-of-the-art gaming stations, including 30 seats for gamers, stadium seating, and large screens. The couple says the place could be used for both tournaments and casual gaming. And some people think of gaming as, you know, it's just a gaming big deal, but it's not. It brings people together, you know, a center for the community, yeah. not just an entertainment venue. I want it to be something bigger than that. Erickson says none, none of the gaming places in the Twin Cities have an arena style format. Teachers from Kimberly Lane Elementary School in Plymouth came to the rescue after a school bus broke down in front of their building last Friday. Students cheered on teachers as they pushed the bus down the fire lane and over a curb so other buses behind it could go. The bus had some engine problems and couldn't start. At one point there were 20 adults helping out, but to their surprise, only three people were needed to move the bus forward. People were kind of laughing and shaking their heads like I can't believe we just did that because we had just done seven, I think it was, mini coyote dashes. So we were all pretty tired from yelling and running and then to have this uh, really great workout at the end of the day moving a bus made it extra special at the end of the day. And no worries, they got the bus back up and running again. Goes to show you, Kimberly Lane teachers are good to have around. Whitecutter football team has scored some good wins this season, including at Prior Lake. Their last W was their biggest yet. Trojans traveled to Eden Prairie to take on the 4-0 Eagles. Whitecutter opens the scoring as Thomas Schmidt finds Deshaun Bush open over the middle, and the Trojans take a 7-0 lead after one quarter. In the second quarter, the Trojans extend the lead. Christian Vasher bowls in for the score. He rushes for 108 yards. It's 14 white, nothing White Zeta at the half. Third quarter, Eden Prairie puts together its only scoring drive. Johnny Harlow caps the drive with a two-yard run. Eagles are within 14 to seven. White Zeta defense, superb in this one. Sam Thomas stopped in his tracks by Joe Demereau and company. They hold off the Eagles to 161 yards of offense for the night. Peter Melquist gives the Trojans some insurance points, knocking through the field goal of 27 yards, and Wysetta leads 17-7. And their defense puts the finishing touch on a big win. Rashaka Rokes gets the sack as Wysetta beats Eden Prairie for the first time since 2012. 17-7 is the final. We knew they ran the ball, you know, they weren't much of a passing team, so we came out with that, with that energy and up front. I think we were really strong up front. We came out really physically, so I think that helped us in the long run. Champlain Park and Anoka meet every year in football in the battle for the paddle game. They went to Anoka's Goodrich Field to meet the Tornadoes this past week. First quarter, Jace Miller connects High Gavin through a big third down conversion for the Rebels. Sean Shipman caps the drive with a three-yard score, and Champlain Park is up 7 to nothing. The Rebels' defense comes out strong, and Oka's Dylan Schmidt is hit hard, driven back by Noah Link and Obi Evaletcha. Second quarter, the Rebels' line opens up a big hole for Shipman, and he's gone. 42 yards for his third touchdown of the game. Champlain Park leads 24-0 at halftime. Opening kickoff of the second half, Champlain Park's Tommy Oyaro mishandles the kick, slips down, still is able to pick the ball up and then watch him go. He'll zip through the Anoka defenders for a 95-yard touchdown return. The Rebels are in control, leading 31 to nothing. Shipman gets loose again and races 44 yards to the end zone. The junior running back racks up 206 yards and four touchdowns. Champlain Park wins 45-8 is the final. The Rebels are now 4-1. and one. Some of the nation's top runners and teams were at the Roy Griak Invitational Cross Country Meet hosted by the University of Minnesota. Cherry Creek from Colorado wins the girls' gold division title. Three Minnesota teams are 3-4-5 with Wyzetta coming in fifth. Maple Grove places 26th. Riley Stewart of Cherry Creek wins it. Abby Nekinicki of Wyzetta is the top local runner, placing fourth. 
Providence Academy was 11th in the Maroon Division. Minnesota teams finished 1 2 in the Boyd's Gold with White Bear Lake first and Edina second. From our area, Wyzetta is 19th and Maple Grove 20th. CJ Young of Maple Grove is the top local runner in 41st place. Frankie Lynch of Benilde St. Margaret's won the Maroon Division race. Now to soccer, where the Maple Grove girls lost in early September to Centennial, but have not tasted defeat since. The Crimson were at home to face Tutina Grace Saturday. Eagles goalie Emma Lehman played a solid game in net. Junior came up with save after save in this match. The Crimson dominated for long stretches of play, but there was no score in regulation. So we go to overtime, and in the first OT, Hannah Zahn's corner kick is headed into the Eagles net by Abby Schulte. That's the only goal of a match. The Crimson win it one to nothing. MG is now 12, one and one on the season. Earlier in the boys match, the Eagles and Crimson almost identical records coming in. Off a quarter kick, the ball deflects to Andy Hicks and Maple Grove takes a one to nothing lead just seven minutes into the game. Crimson pull away in the second, Will Zaber. Sets up Chris France for the goal for a 2-0 lead. Maple Grove goes now on to win it. 4-0 the final.